Okay, thank you. Thank you everyone to, for coming. Um, we were very pleased to be able to book the rooms differently. Instead of having the small room, we were able to have the big room. So um, thanks for coming. Um, we are very excited to have Tone Vays here, to, that he made it all the way. <laughs> thank you very much. So uh, shortly to the program today. Um, firstly, Ronald is going to say something from Froriep, obviously a sponsor of ours that made it possible to have this big room and also the apero that we're going to have afterwards. Also a big thanks to Ernest and Young, who is also a sponsor of this event. Um, without them, obviously, we couldn't make this all happen and not costing anything. And secondly, I'm going to tell you, give you a quick review about Tone Vase, what he's done and... What he's, what he's currently doing, and afterwards he will obviously give the presentation. And to sum it all up, Lukas Bechart, which is the, the president of the Bitcoin Association Switzerland, will give you a quick talk about current things that he's doing and what he's interested in. So um, to Ronald, and I hope you enjoy the talk. So hi, everybody. Um, just for information, I don't want to waste your time, and I know you're waiting for a tone, but I thought um, because of the current things are, that are going on and the, all these warnings around ICOs and the hypes, it may be interesting for you to um, get a, some information about how legal people look at ICO and what you have to think before you start an ICO, um, that you know a little bit more what lawyers do and how they qualify ICO. So on the first slide, when you start an ICO, uh, of course, you have to think about what kind of token you want to issue. From a legal perspective, we see kind of four categories. If it's like for uh, token that can be used at a later stage to purchase goods or services, then it's obviously a utility token. If it's a token that hasn't got any rewards, then it's maybe a donation but it's also kind of a utility token. Um, if it's a financing token that you just want to raise funds to do your project, then you have to think about, is it a token with a repayment or no repayment? If it's uh, one with repayment, then it's uh, maybe an equity token, which means that it's something unlimited in time, except if the company gets bankrupt and there is a reward based on the success of the company, and the token represents a partial share or participation certificate, and the rewards are based on dividends. And the second category are the debt tokens. This is something similar to a bond. Um, it's limited in time, is an equal interest rate. And then the third category, this is kind of a new construct that not exists in law. It's something like an entitlement contract. This is maybe also a bit in the gray area. It's like a, a participation agreement where you have a reward, but the reward cannot be on the dividend because the dividend uh, is subject to shareholders' approval, so it has to be a participation on the reward and not on the profit. Then on second, as a second point, you have to choose the right type of organization. Um, I talk to a lot of people and everyone thinks um, a foundation is the right thing that they have to do, maybe because Ethereum did a foundation, but obviously a foundation is something only possible if you have a public purpose, which means you cannot just raise money and then the foundation pays you for your work. It has to be a public purpose like you creating a new blockchain or something else that is for the public open source that has a public benefit. Then if it's a business purpose, usually it is then a stock corporation where you need 100,000 Swiss francs or a limited liability company also known as the GmbH where you need only 20,000 Swiss francs. But these, both of these companies um, are for business purposes and the main difference is that with the limited liability company, the kind of quota holders, like the shareholders, are public in the commercial register, whereas you got more anonymity with the stock corporation. So if you have chosen your corporation and you know what kind of token you want to issue, 
you have to think about if you need any permissions or if you need documentation. Um, if you look at the utility tokens, uh, utility tokens, the issuance, the contract under such an issuance is a, a barter contract if it's a good, or it's um, an agent agreement, a service agreement if it's a service. What you need, definitely need, is terms and conditions where you clearly state what are the terms, what is the contract that you agree with the people that are purchasing these tokens. Uh, permission is generally not required except if you have some kind of financing aspect within it, but a simple utility token does not require permission. Um, a bit, bit more, more complicated is, uh, or are financing tokens, if you look at the equity token, as said, it can be, it depends on the structure, uh, a partial share certificate. And as you may probably know, if you issue shares, then you need uh, more uh, prospectus. So that's why it makes definitely sense that you look at what you need if you issue shares and then you have a prospectus and also terms and conditions for the sale just to make sure that one time someone says this is a, a share you did the same thing as you would issue a share. Um, permissions also here generally there is no permission required except if the purpose of the fundraising is that you would like to invest the money in other projects then it could be that it qualifies as a collective investment scheme which requires a permission by the FINMA, by the Financial Market Authority. If you look at the debt tokens, this is the same if you compare two bonds. If you want to issue a bond, you need a prospectus. Also here, a prospectus and terms and conditions are required. Um, a permission here is not required because you can also issue a, a normal bond without a permission. Then the last category is the participation rights token. Here, you definitely need also terms and conditions. Um, as said before, the qualification is a bit unclear because Swiss law has a numerous clauses on participation certificates um, stipulated in the Code of Obligations. Um, for, if you look at the permissions, there is also no permission required except if it qualifies as a collective investment scheme. So this was it already from my side and now I wish you a lot of fun with Tom Weiss and thanks for listening. Yeah.